let's uh, let's deal with the biologicals first. This is a, this is the area where we incubate biological indicators. Biological indicators for steam sterilization and basically for all other methods of sterilization is something called Geobacillus sterothermophilus. Geobacillus sterothermophilus is a uh, spore. Okay, a spore, if you remember, is a bacteria with a hard shell around it, making it more difficult to kill. But this is well, this would be a biological indicator uh, itself, all right, that we would put into the sterilizer, and we would put it in the most difficult place to sterilize. And we'll, when we come to the uh, high temperature sterilization area, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. But biological indicator, much like chemical indicator, serves as a process challenge device, or PCD, to challenge ourselves or our process of sterilization that gives us assurance, reasonable assurance of sterility. So once it comes out of a sterilizer, we incubate it right over here in the little warming station. That's not going to be in the exam. But if it's alive, it's going to look like snot, believe it or not, inside the... Uh, inside here. If it doesn't look brown like uh, like something that comes out of your nose when you're sick, it's negative. If it comes out looking brown, it's positive. We include a biological indicator with every load that we sterilize. If it comes out positive, that means the entire load is not sterile and has to go through decontem, through prep and pack, and sterilization again. Okay? Also in this section, if you take a look over here, are sterad machines. Sterad machines are low temperature sterilizers. These guys right over here use hydrogen peroxide or H2O2 to generate what they call gas plasma. This guy right over here does not like paper or cellulose based wrapping materials. He's very finicky about that because cellulose absorbs the sterilant here. In this particular case, it's H2O2. These guys, all of these guys do the same thing. These guys rely on a deep vacuum draw as the first cycle, okay? Then they introduce H2O2 mist in there. And once it gets to permeate everything inside there, they zap it with a radio frequency to turn it into a plasma. After it has a chance to interact with the instruments and destroy all microorganisms, they uh, pull out the, uh, uh, the vacuum, they generate a vacuum again inside the chamber to clear out all the residual H2O2. H2O2 is great as far as uh, uh, sterilants, low temperature sterilants is concerned because it does not leave a toxic residue. Like for example, ethylene oxide, which is the other example of um, low temperature sterilization. Ethylene oxide is very good for many different things because it's, uh, it's a small molecule that has excellent penetration. Uh, it, does, uh, it works well with all forms of uh, packaging material but it uses a different biological indicator. I'm talking about ethylene oxide right now, since we're next to the low temperature sterilizers. Since we don't have an example of it here, I'll just talk about it. Ethylene oxide is good that way. It kills everything because it's small, it penetrates all packages, but it leaves a, uh, a uh, dangerous residue that has to be aerated out. And it's aerated out over a period of eight to 12 hours. So the entire sterilization process for uh, ETO takes about 20 hours. I mean, no, uh, uh, no flash sterilization there. You know, everything has to be, you know, prior planning to prevent uh, poor performance with ethylene oxide. Uh, ethylene oxide is also non-corrosive. So, I mean, that's why we use it. We don't want to use it because it's, it's a toxic chemical. We have to protect ourselves. There has to be proper notice. There has to be proper eye wash stations uh, uh, all over the place. You have to have personnel monitoring that you, uh, little monitors, little tags that you put on your uh, breathing zone, which is one foot around your nose and mouth, right, for ethylene oxide. And then you have to make sure that you do everything just right with it, including, you know, unloading the sterilizer if you have to do that. And when you unload the sterilizer before, before you go for aeration, you have to open the door six inches for 15 minutes <coughs> before you unload it, okay? Then you put it on the cart and you transport it by pushing, uh, by pulling it rather than pulling it. But that's enough about ethylene oxide. We're back to H2O2 here. H2O2 works best with a wrapping material called Tyvek, okay? But up until recently, and which you're gonna see on the test, uh, it didn't do well with instruments with lumens. But some of the newer machines over here actually do okay with instruments with lumen. But remember, Tyvek works best and no cellulose-based materials for this. One other form of uh, 
uh, low temperature sterilizer that the book talks about is ozone or O3, which also uses a deep vacuum cycle, okay? And also likes uh, various types of packaging material, but um, uh, we, they don't talk about that too much on the exam, so we won't spend too much time about that. All right, so this is our biological indicator station. We walk through here, we remember the biological indicator. Oh yeah, a different biological indicator for ethylene oxide, right, was Bacillus atrophius, okay? That's the only one that's different. Make sense? All right, let's move on.